In my opinion, there has never been a better time to be into VR than now. These past couple of years have seen a significant push towards growing the industry in all areas. Gaming, headsets, content and cameras, even Apple has officially jumped into the bandwagon with their recently announced headset. I personally started shooting VR with the release of the Insta360 Evo. If you can still get your hands on one of those little cameras, it's still a great entry level system. From that camera, I moved on to a dual GoPro camera system with the Antonia lenses. It did offer a visible jump in visual fidelity from the Evo, but the workflow required to convert and process the footage did present a learning curve and ultimately it was still only 30 frames per second uh, natively. I then bit the bullet and found a great deal on a used K2 Pro system and that was a complete game changer regarding visual fidelity, codecs, and frame rates. It was the ultimate system at the time that really did produce a professional level result. The image was great, and although the post-production process was not any less complicated than the GoPro footage, the end result was far superior to anything else I had tried. But there was always one thing that still felt outdated even then. The focusing. Aside from the initial focus calibration, you have to perform on both lenses to ensure equal focus you always had to decide on the main area of focus regardless, either super close to the lenses, a few feet away, or at infinity. Any drastic change in the distance of the main subject and you would almost certainly have to adjust your focus again on both lenses. It was the one thing I did not enjoy about the camera. To my and possibly everyone else's surprise, Canon eventually announced their dual fisheye RF lens. That and the R5 camera at the time would have given creators access to something unheard of. 8K at 30 frames per second with a DSLR system. It was a relatively inexpensive way for anyone to start shooting 8K, especially if you already own the R5. I immediately started making plans to start selling my K2 Pro system in order to help fund the transition. But one thing kept me from pulling the trigger. 30 frames per second. Having had the experience with 30 FPS systems and interpolating that footage to 60 FPS, I knew that I would have to do the same because even 8K footage with 30 FPS is still 30 FPS. Ultimately, I decided to wait and see if a firmware update would be released that would unlock a 60 FPS option, even if it was at a slightly lower resolution. Or so I thought. And so I waited, waited, and waited some more. Nothing ever came out of it. If anything, the R5 system was going through their overheating controversy, which ultimately made it much easier for me to keep my K2 Pro during all of that time. But then, another unlikely rumor regarding the R5C started to make the rounds. With every new rumor at the time, I knew that this would be the system I was finally switching to. Finally, 8K at 60 frames per second and no overheating. It's exactly what I was waiting for. As soon as the official announcement was made, I listed and sold my K2 Pro and pre-ordered the R5C and picked up the dual fisheye lens. Then the camera was released. I finally had the ultimate system at the time and it was happily ever after since then. Well, not really. For those of you who were there all along, you know all the challenges that were present almost immediately after it's released. Most importantly, the lack of 60 FPS support on Canon's official VR utility. Yes, I won't deny it. I did almost regret having purchased the system at first and felt like we were all deceived. How could Canon release and boast that this was the perfect camera for their dual fisheye lens if their own VR utility software didn't even support 60 FPS. Anyways, long story short, many moons later, they finally updated their official VR utility to fully support 60 FPS, and I was happy as can be. Well, mostly, you see, I still had to deal with the same issue all along. The focusing. I love shooting at f2.8, but it meant having much more distance control of my main subject. In general, 
you would mostly be shooting with the camera in a static position, either on a tripod or on a gimbal. And even though the gimbal does offer a great way to go mobile, depending on your subject and shooting settings, focus can come into play, especially if the shooting becomes more dynamic and your subject moves back and forth, which is always the case when shooting my children running around the house or the backyard. It never occurred to me that this was something I would be able to do anything practical about. That is, until LiDAR systems started making their way into the market. The first commercial system I heard about was by DJI. They were all great, but required specific gimbals in order to be used, something I was not quite ready to invest into just yet. The gimbal we owned did not quite make the compatibility mark, so I moved on. That is until about a week ago when I started seeing YouTubers review a new product by PD Movie. And so the gear started to turn again. Wait, is this real? An all in one independent basic LiDAR system to make all of your manual lenses into autofocus? Yes, I do have some vintage Canon lenses I would love to and will use with this, but could I also use this on my Canon dual fisheye lens? and make it the first commercially available VR camera system with fully synchronized autofocus capability? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. It does just that. And here it is in all its glory. It's super straightforward, lightweight, and self-sustained. You do have to go through the same calibration process, just like any other manual lens you want to use with this. But once it's calibrated, you will never have to calibrate it again. The device has five lens profiles managed through these five color stickers that you put on each different lens once you calibrate it. And when you're ready to switch lenses, you just change the setting on the device so the light matches the color of the sticker on your lens. And voila, I give you the Canon R5C with the dual fisheye lens shooting at 8K 60 FPS at f2.8 in full autofocus mode. I officially have no more excuses not to film with the system anymore. Okay, a few quick notes to those of you mad enough to wanna to try this out. I highly recommend you go watch the official product reviews. Even though nobody else is currently using this system for VR, everything else about the system still applies here. Primarily the area of focus. Again, this is not a technical review. Plenty of others have done that already. This LiDAR system will be focusing for and detecting subjects within approximately a 28 millimeter focal length in front of its sensors, regardless of how wide or narrow your lens is. So keep that in mind because the dual fisheye lens has a field of view of approximately 180, 190 degrees which means that the LiDAR system will be focusing on a very small circle in the center of your viewing area. If your subject ever moves out of that 28 millimeter zone in the center of your view, then it will adjust its focus back to infinity until an object or subject comes back in within that small 28 millimeter focal distance circle within the center of your viewing. Again, that is very important to keep in mind especially with how wide this dual fisheye lens is. This may not be a problem for me in general, but it's worth noting. So forget the rules of third with most wide and super wide lenses. In those cases, you will still need to manually focus. But in my opinion, for VR, this should really not be that big of an issue because by default, you always want to have your subject dead in the center anyways when shooting VR. I'm obviously not sponsored by any of these companies that make any of these products. I purchased all of these with my own money and I made what I considered a reasonable amount of research to ensure that it was the right product for me. These LiDAR systems are not cheap, but they are relatively inexpensive compared to the other options out there that require specific gimbals and all the other accessories such as the LiDAR units, gear systems, etc. Oh, and uh, by the way, not only does this give you autofocus, but if you want, you can switch it to manual focus and use the provided wireless control wheel to pull focus, just like any other wireless focusing system. This is my setup. I have the R5C, 
the dual fisheye lens, this cage by small rig, the LiDAR system, and for those of you keen-eyed viewers that made it all this way into the video, I have an extra cool accessory I also use. These are AR glasses by a company called Enreal. They are essentially a 200 inch TV on your glasses. You can hook up these to portable gaming consoles such as a Switch, Steam Deck, or an ROG Ally, or really anything that has a USB-C video output. But they do make this little adapter here that lets you take a standard HDMI output signal and convert it to USB-C for the glasses. So what I do is I use this little uh, converter to turn my micro HDMI output from the camera to a full size HDMI port, which I then plug into the Nreal converter for the glasses, which ultimately gives me a way to plug in these cool glasses as a wearable monitor right on my face. No, you can't get stereoscopic live view of the camera on these, even though these glasses do fully support it when you natively run them with their app on your cell phone, you do essentially see exactly what any other external monitor would see from this camera. I, I personally love seeing my zoom to one eye only and in cropped slightly mode. So the entire screen is filled with about 75% of the center of one of these eye lenses from the dual fisheye lens. And what is even cooler is that you can always use the magnification settings of the camera to zoom in or out as much as you want. Again, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of these companies, but I will leave some links below to as much of this gear as I can find for any of you interested in doing something similar to this. I hope that this is at the very least of interest to some of you or that you found this entertaining. I will also be following up shortly with some actual sample VR footage of this system in action. So you will need a VR headset to get the full experience. Thank you again for watching. And if any of you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability or point you towards a better direction if I don't necessarily have the answer. Until next time.